Winter's footsteps grow louder. Come Monday afternoon when we gather again for our supporter video, autumn will have officially arrived at precisely 2.19 in the afternoon Eastern time on Monday, fall will slip quietly into place. Tonight though, freeze warnings already laid out across Northern New England and Maine. Temperatures in some areas will drop to the 20s and it is still summer. Looking at the surface analysis for this afternoon, a weak frontal system moving into the Midwest Back behind it, temperatures in the 60s with a cold core low across eastern South Dakota. Some very cold air moving into the northeastern U.S. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s across Ontario and Quebec this afternoon. In the western U.S., not too much going on, although the remains of Tropical Storm Mario making pretty good headway into California and Nevada. And we do have flood watches in effect for the Sierras from Yosemite National Park all the way down to the Mojave Desert. In the Northeast, highs were in the 60s and 70s in New England, but widespread mid-80s from Philadelphia down to Washington, D.C. and into Western Virginia. Freeze warning is in effect tonight for Western Maine, the White Mountains and the Adirondacks. Temperatures down to 27, frost advisory across outlying areas around the mountains, even into Watertown, New York, where we're expecting mid-30s. In the big cities, Albany, Syracuse, expecting 40s. Temperatures in the Great Lakes region ranged from 60s north to 80s south. Chicago, a warm 87 degrees this afternoon, 90 in Indianapolis, and 92 at Evansville as this long-duration minor heat wave continues. Beaches will be hazardous Saturday in the central Great Lakes, particularly Michigan and Wisconsin, due to waves of three to six feet, with this storm approaching from the west. Also some problems this evening around Duluth due to strong rip currents. In the southeast, not really much to talk about. Some popcorn showers and storms going up from South Carolina to Alabama and Mississippi, stronger storms along this boundary right here. We do have hot weather in place, low 90s from Florida and even mid 90s from Shreveport, Alexandria, Jackson, up to Nashville, 97 at Birmingham this afternoon. And we did have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings earlier today south of Tupelo from that storm right there also, the potential for a few brief occurrences of strong gusty winds with some of these cells around Shreveport, Tyler, and the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Looking at the weather in the southern plains, we've got that weak front pushing south, some drier air entering Oklahoma and western Arkansas, but we will see that moisture and warm air start to lift northward over the next day or so. In the Northern Plains, that's where we find that occlusion. You can pretty much pick that out immediately. I think just west of the uh, Sioux Falls area. Let's take a look at the water vapor imagery that often reveals it in more detail. And there we see the dry slot pushing north into Iowa and the wraparound right there into the Yankton area. So there you go. That's good for looking at the structure. There's the warm conveyor belt feeding around into Minnesota and the Fargo area. And we do have a marginal risk for severe from central Kansas all the way into southwestern Nebraska. Already storms ongoing around Grand Island and this will continue propagating to the southeast. There could be additional cells further to the west. In fact, there they go right there on the Kansas-Nebraska border. The main risks, isolated hail and strong convective winds. There could be an isolated tornado, especially around Russell, but the likelihood is on the low side, not really the optimal setup. There's a look at the radar new cells around Oberlin, Kansas, way up in the northwest, north of Colby. A stronger storm along the Nebraska-Kansas border near Phillipsburg. And we can take a look at that with the Grand Island radar. It'll take a minute to come up, but a couple of uh, severe thunderstorm warnings on that. Ping pong ball-sized hail.
and 60 mile an hour winds and we can look at the uh, structure of this storm go up to the higher tilts that tells you a lot and yeah there's certainly some curvature some indication of a notch in there weak echo region and it almost closes off there so yeah that storm is definitely of significant interest that could be one of our uh, brief tornado producers this afternoon echo tops on that up to about 40 uh, 35,000 feet right now and uh, yeah we we'll have to keep watching that as it approaches Smith Center Osborne and the northern tier counties of Kansas the southwestern U.S. mild to warm weather 81 degrees at Denver 81 at Grand Junction and 82 at Salt Lake City 76 to 82 in the Four Corners area including Albuquerque the Sacramento Mountains and central New Mexico right here under a flood watch through this evening for heavy precipitation. In the deserts, a little bit more mild today. The hundreds are gone. We're looking for 98 at Phoenix, 95 for Tucson, and 84 for downtown Los Angeles. Mid-80s in the San Joaquin Valley, and of course all this under the influence of the remains of Tropical Storm Mario. You can see numerous enhanced cumulus to towering cumulus and a few CBs in there from central Nevada all down through the Mokion Rim. A flood watch is in effect across the central Sierras from Yosemite Park all down through the Tehachapi Mountains, parts of the Antelope Valley, not quite that far south, but down to about uh, just north of Palmdale around Edwards Air Force Base and back up into the mountains. Most of the concern is around recent burn scars, such as the French, Garnet, and Burrell scars. The erosion could produce damaging mud flows. And the northwestern U.S. looks nice on the surface, but the heat is back. We've got upper 80s from east of the Cascades to the Bitterroots, 74 at Seattle, 83 at Portland, and 90 at Medford. Dense fog advisories were in effect along the Oregon coast from Florence to Astoria. Otherwise, fair skies and just picking up more cirrus as you go south and get closer to those tropical storm remnants. And we head out into the Pacific and there's that big subtropical high. But conditions do deteriorate as you go north, atmospheric river punching right into southeastern Alaska, the British Columbia coast as well, around Prince Rupert. All of southeastern Alaska from the Petersburg area down to Ketchikan under a flood watch through Saturday evening, four to seven inches of rain possible. Rainfall warnings as well along the British Columbia coast due to the atmospheric river setup. Alaska itself looking pretty good. Temperatures are falling into the 30s and 40s. 24 there around Anaktuvik Pass in the Brooks Range and 30s on the North Slope. A bit stormy in the Canadian High Arctic. The uh, winds at Resolute going up to 35 knots sustained. They do have a wind warning in effect beginning this afternoon. 55 mile hour winds possible tonight and diminishing Saturday. That's due to these very strong gradients and uh, some wintry weather already starting up around Melville Island. Down south in Canada, it's south mild weather. Not much to talk about. I think they've lost a lot of the wildfire alerts, uh, smoke alerts. And in Quebec, yeah, there's a big chunk of cold air, snow in the interior, temperatures in the 40s. And we have numerous frost advisories all through Quebec as that polar air surges south, most of the punch going into the Maritimes. As for the tropics, we have Tropical Storm Gabrielle finally. 45 knot winds on that 1004 millibars moving northwest at 10 miles an hour. And this does not look like it's going to become a problem. The depiction of forecast movement taking that well east of Bermuda. It will reach 95 knots, making that a high end category two storm and recurve rather sharply out into the middle of the Atlantic. And we take a look at the very latest with this morning's GFS. There goes Gabrielle. Of course, we want to use Bermuda as a reference point. That little speck out there, that's it. 
GFS is tracking a little bit closer than what NHC has. But overall, over the past three days, there's been good consistency keeping it east of Bermuda. But they're not totally out of the woods. This will certainly bear watching. Another wave coming in from the east on the Cape Verde storm track. Not seeing any development on that, but you know, this is pretty far out and they're, you know, these models do flip flop past one week and we could see something coming together. The model actually getting a little bit aggressive there over Puerto Rico, the Leeward Islands around September 27th. That's going to be the latest frame that I have. Here's a new chart that might be of interest. This is West Africa, where a lot of our disturbances come from. This is the first wave we're going to be looking at after Gabrielle that moves past the Cape Verde Islands on Saturday. There appears to be a secondary wave in here that may follow close behind. Yeah, maybe a third right there around Monday. So a little bit stormy there. Then the next big disturbance, here it is over Nigeria on the 25th that propagates westward across the Ivory Coast, Liberia around the 28th, 29th. And uh, this certainly looks like a very significant wave. So we have to keep an eye on the African coast around October 1st and 2nd. And let's take a look at those high temperatures for today. 60s in the Northern Plains and in Northern New England. Very warm in the Pacific Northwest and very hot through the lower Mississippi River Valley. 90 all the way there to Indianapolis. We're gonna see that cold air start to ooze south, some of it coming from the Pacific early next week. You can see that drop right there Sunday and Monday, 50s and 60s for highs in the Northern Rockies. That will very slowly make it to the central US. There it is for Tuesday and then for Wednesday, 70s and 80s all the way down towards the Dallas and Nashville area. And there's Thursday, kind of a stagnant pattern, but that cold air will gradually settle southward. There's the overnight lows tonight, 40s and even a few 30s up there in the far northern northeast U.S., pretty cool in the central Rockies, 40s there, and here's that next chunk of cold air coming in from the Pacific for Monday, dropping those overnight lows down into the 30s and a few 20s, 27 there at Yellowstone National Park for early Tuesday. And that's what we'll filter partially into the central U.S. So there's the uh, lows on Thursday. And a look at your precipitation for tonight. The Western Great Lakes, the best chances there. Also in Kansas, the Ozarks, and Oklahoma. Then we go through the weekend, still looks pretty wet in the Midwest and the far northwestern northern plains. Then gradually as that cold air settles down, that'll send a few boundaries southward. That's good for convective interaction. So some modest chances for showers and storms all through the southern U.S. into the deep south for midweek. So let's put it together. There's that occlusion in the Corn Belt area lifting up into the Great Lakes, producing those chances for rain there, and a kind of indeterminate frontal system, probably two different segments there in the southern U.S. Couldn't get good consistency out of these charts, so just take it with a grain of salt. Here's our next Pacific weather system moving in. That'll have big impacts as it moves through the northwestern U.S., and that will help filter some cooler air into the central U.S., and also kick off some showers and storms all through Wyoming into the Ozarks. That'll gradually settle south, and you can see that this chain of frontal systems kind of organizes with another one coming out of the uh, California region. And there's what we got for Thursday and Friday. All of that gradually sinks into the Gulf. Here comes another reinforcing shot, but I didn't see much progress on that. Looks like most of that was heading for the northeastern U.S., but still a definite difference in pressure from highs, high pressure up to the north, Great Lakes area, and low pressure down in the Gulf. So that gradient will favor north to south flow, which is good for a drier and cooler weather pattern across much of the country. And before we go, let's take a look at that 500 millibar chart. This is the chart for tonight. 
You ever been to the eye doctor and they say, what looks better, one or two? One or two? One or two? What looks different here? Well, if you look at the bottom left, we're comparing 10 days from now to what we have today. So we're looking for the, uh, the change over the next 10 days. It does look like that polar front jet remains in Canada. Also, the flow a little bit less meridional. None of those big waves going north and south. It kind of flattens out a bit, but it does get stormy off of the California coast. This cutoff flow drifting across the central U.S. rather weak. So, this points to a gradual activation of the fall weather patterns, but not really in place by September 29th. And that will do it for this episode of Forecast Lab. Thanks to our newest supporters, Nicholas Lifka, Dr. Yuri Mom, and Brock Austin. Thank you very much for stepping up and supporting this channel. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here for the Monday edition as we start the first day of fall. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.